Green. And here we are. Welcome back for meeting two. Uh, we are so appreciative of your time. So thank you once again for your willingness to um, serve the community in this way. And as you can see from our list, we have quite an impressive medical working group and we're grateful for every one of you. Now tonight we have um, a volunteer who wasn't able to be at the last meeting, but she's here at this one. So uh, welcome to uh, Beatrice Folsick, who's a physician's assistant. So if you wouldn't mind, Ms. Folsick, we asked people at the last meeting if they would um, share their, their credentials, area of expertise, and then what inspired them to volunteer. Would you mind sharing that with the group so that everybody can just get to know you a little bit? Oh, your hand's raised, so I bet that means you're having a hard time um, with your volume. Is that correct? If you'd like to wait, we can we can come back to that or maybe we can do introductions toward the end after maybe you've uh, worked through that piece. So I'm sorry that now isn't going to work, but I have a feeling it's a technical difficulty. So I will go back to uh, our goals. So these are the goals that were put forward as part of the charge for our uh, working group. And um, I just want to put those in front of everyone again so that um, everyone is very clear about what it is that we'll be doing together. And you can see we'll be providing input, reviewing data, um, and reviewing and assessing scientific research. So we want to continue to put that out in front of people because it's really important for all of us to stay focused on what it is that we are trying to accomplish. Um, and as was stated very eloquently by school board member Tim LeBron at the last meeting, our goal is to uh, get kids into school safely and then have them be able to stay there safely. And in that effort, we are, as we are with everything, driven by um, our five values. That's what motivates our actions in all situations and certainly in this one. However, um, in order to plan for the pandemic, we have our five values and we've also added some guiding principles to those values. And you can see what those are um, on the white side of the screen. And you can also see that we have elevated the uh, value of equity on the apple because we know that the pandemic has exacerbated existing inequities and um, that is something that is really important for the school to be addressing continuously um, throughout the um, emergency we're in and beyond. So uh, as a summary for our November 30th meeting, I'll just do this very briefly because all but a couple of you were there. We had an introduction of the volunteers we shared the medical group working goals. We introduced the norms of collaboration, which we will reintroduce again today. Um, I shared with you a decision-making timeline that went back to last spring, right up until the present time, how and when we've made the decisions we've made, and shared what the next steps were. And this evening, that is when we'll be delving into the next steps. However, the situation is, as you can imagine, about as fluid as any situation I've ever encountered. And it's only been a week since we've met and already there are some updates. For example, uh, last week on Tuesday, several of us in the group were able to listen um, to a Q&A with Dr. Joseph Allen from Harvard. And it was a really um, interesting and enlightening session. So I'll be sure to send the medical group um, in the minutes that are upcoming for this meeting, I will send you the link to the recording so that any of you who are interested are able to watch that. Um, in addition, I've uh, posed some questions to public health that are helpful in our planning and received some important information on that too that I'll share very briefly. First of all, I asked them for updates related to the um, six feet of physical distancing guidance that has been um, set forth by them because Dr. Allen spoke quite a bit about three feet being sufficient. 
and um, I was told by public health that they are monitoring um, the research, but they have no intention at this time to recommend shortening the six feet. I just figured that would be an important thing for us to, to know about. I also asked about the um, seven to 10 day uh, quarantine versus the uh, 14 days. And um, I was told that while public health would uh, be aligning in the near future with DHS and CDC on the seven to 10 days, all three organizations continue to see the 14 day quarantine as the gold standard. And I'm sure that there are experts on this in this particular group, and that might be something you choose to, to discuss when we are in our small groups. There was also an article in the Observer that uh, mistakenly said that students would uh, more grades were coming back as early as January 4th. Um, that was a mistake um, on the part of the person who wrote the article because the author um, believed that's when second semester started. And it does not. It starts on the 19th of January. So that um, made a lot of people uh, jump to some conclusions, which is very understandable considering it was in the paper. Um, the next thing is that there have been um, positive changes on the Oregon School District COVID dashboard. Now it is certainly um, wonderful to see an improvement. It's probably still too early to see if this is any kind of a trend. And once again, we have experts on that in this room who may be able to share more information on that in the small groups. And finally, uh, we have secured a facilitator. Uh, Drew Howick of Howick Associates has joined the group as the facilitator, as it's very important that I play the role of an active listener in this situation. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of information on Mr. Howick. Um, he is a past partner in the, with the Oregon School District. As a matter of fact, he um, helped to plan the facilitation of the 2015 Vision Conference here in Oregon. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about his background, I have the link here. And of course, I'll be sending you the slide deck because he has worked with many school districts, uh, many in Wisconsin, businesses and professional organizations. And um, the tagline for Howick Associates is designing discussions that make a difference. And I can't think of um, discussions that are more likely to make a difference than the ones we'll be having here on our every other Monday meetings with one another. So with that, I'd like to pass it off to our new facilitator, uh, Mr. Howick. Great, Leslie, thank you. Um, and it's a pleasure to meet, meet all of you. Since uh, your last meeting, I have spent some time with Leslie uh, and Tim and Krista talking about this meeting, what we want to accomplish, how to use your time wisely. And um, I think we um, have a, a good agenda for tonight, and it's going to give you, as you can see by the purpose statement, it's going to give everyone in this group an opportunity to share their professional suggestions and input on how the Oregon School District can best get students back in school safely and keep them there. Um, so unlike the last meeting, which was a lot of downloading of information and orientation, uh, tonight's a chance for you to share your perspectives on this. And uh, that is why we're going to be doing some breakout groups. So it enables everyone to have more of an opportunity to contribute to this particular question. Um, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, so our agenda <clears throat> at this point is to take a brief look at our norms of collaboration, make sure we understand how those can help us have a productive meeting. Uh, we'll talk about the breakout groups uh, and then the framing question, which you read there in the box. Um, this is what all of us will have a chance to respond to. Um, and then we're going to reconvene back in the large group and have a quick report out a summary, if you will, of the key concepts that were discussed in each of the breakout groups, and then talk about the next steps for the uh, for our next meeting. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about those once we get into the small groups. Uh, the norms of collaboration, I um, Leslie overviewed these last time, and today is the first meeting that will really come into play because we'll be collaborating. Um, and so um, my intent is not to go through each one of these other than to say, uh, research shows uh, from a lot of different areas that these specific norms, which are really behaviors, are the things that most impact the quality of a discussion whenever a group gets together. 
And one of the things that I've learned as I've worked with many, many groups um, is that there's really no such thing as group behavior. Um, what there is instead is, uh, is that all group behavior results from individual decisions and actions uh, from everyone who participates. So when we look at these behaviors, we basically are asking ourselves, what behaviors will I exhibit? And hopefully these seven are front and center uh, that will contribute to an effective discussion. Um, and tonight we'll be putting ideas on the table. That's the fourth one there. And how we do that I think is, uh, is, is really important. So even prefacing some of those ideas with things like, uh, well, here's one idea or here's a suggestion I'd like the school district to consider. Put it out there so it's a, an accessible idea. Um, so anyhow, those are things that we want to keep front and center as we have our discussion tonight and in the future. Uh, next slide. Um, the small group sharing, which we're going to move into very soon. Um, each group will have a facilitator. There'll be two groups, and Leslie is assigned people so that we have people from different areas of expertise, more or less equally in each of the groups. Um, each group will have a facilitator. Uh, I'll be facilitating one, um, and, and, and John Tanner will be facilitating a, another session. Um, we've identified an individual to record the information that comes out of each group. Uh, and then there will be a person that will give the, the larger group a brief report out uh, before we end tonight's meeting. Uh, the goal, as we said, is that everyone has an opportunity to share their professional perspective. Um, uh, the reporter will be given a five minute time period to summarize it to the whole group. And these discussion groups will occur until 6.55. So whoever volunteers to be at the timekeeper uh, that is something we want to uh, watch carefully so that we're all back more or less ready to talk as a full group at that time. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we're going to uh, move to the small groups and once that process is done, John in his group and myself and mine uh, will just orient everybody to the process uh, and then we'll start digging into that particular key question. So, Leslie, I think we're ready to um, to move to those breakouts. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Um, everybody in the call, even if you are an observer, has been assigned to a breakout room. If you are observe an observer, you're more than welcome to be in the breakout room and continue to um, observe the group working. If you'd like to come back to the meeting, not be in the breakout room, but come back for the report outs at 655, I will be sure to admit you at that time also. So I'm about to open our rooms, which means all of you are going to scatter um, into the next place. I think this means we won because we came back first. I was beginning to wonder if I clicked on the right button. I'm like, this is the same group. <laughs> <laughs> Mine dropped me for a second there. Um, you probably know this, but I'll just, upcoming agenda. Um, we're going to have five minutes for each group to uh, report out the main findings to each other. Um, and then a summary and next steps from 7.05 to 7.15 um, about what you expect from us between now and December 21st. Um, and then developing a tentative goal for the meeting. So um, we might have to stretch that a little bit. Uh, and Leslie says, we will be there momentarily. So they are, uh, we can we can talk about them uh, now and then congratulate. <laughs> I feel like I should have music going in the background or maybe I'll just get in touch with my uncomfortability with silence for a while. <laughs> Well, Andy, I did see that you found that what needlepoint bionic. I don't I know, remember. Uh, I pulled, uh, that's it. Ionization, yep. So just an article to read. Again, the technology is new. It's not tested by Ashra. They don't have a position paper on it right now, our position on it, but it seems promising. So.
I, I count on you for all my cool technological uh, solutions to things. I was going to say like bionic, probiotic. I knew it was none of those, but uh, <laughs> probiotic air would be pretty interesting, on. wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was something, you know, something to make air better. <laughs> Let's go with the silence. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> You can talk. I didn't mean to silence you. No, that's that's fine. I will say thank you all because everyone stayed really on on track and and very timely. That was really one of the easiest groups to facilitate ever. So um, thank you. That was that was great. And I learned so much. It's great. Nope, here they come. Sorry, all for the delay. No problem. Okay, are we ready? Oh, Drew's, you're muted. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so we're gonna have um, summaries uh, from Tim and Krista. Um, they were listening and uh, writing feverishly, at least Tim was. So um, Krista, maybe we could uh, go to you for a summary of your group. Uh, and if the group members have anything they'd like to add, to emphasize, et cetera, within a five minute time frame, all yours. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks for John, that was really well done and our group, um, it was amazing. So we had kind of about uh, seven themes, so I'll just go through those. The first was um, balancing the physical health and the mental health impacts. Um, and really when you're talking about mental health impacts, we know what the physical safety or physical health are, but you know, learning gaps, stresses among students, transitions as we get back in school, that there are different stressors and issues associated with transitions. Um, there are students that are currently struggling or may struggle with the transition back. And so there could be AOA, AODA issues or family exposure to violence. And so what is the screening process we are using as kids come back to school to really understand if it's a new stressor, if it's a current stressor, and what is the um, situation that they are in so we can help them as they move back into in-person learning. The second was uh, associated with data. And you know we have available to us state data, Dane County data, and now it's, it's kind of going into school district, but can we dial that data down further into the, the kids and families within our district so we have trends associated, what is happening with that population in and how does that further um, give us additional information in terms of not only stepping forward, but then when do we need to step back if something happens that we need, you know, what are those metrics that we're using? How do we communicate them? And it's two prong. Where do we go forward? Where do we step back? And then looking at that as a trend basis, not just as a daily basis, um, because we know that people are gonna wanna be looking at those metrics and how we communicate them. Um, next is, that uh, when kids and families are motivated and follow protocols, we can keep kids safe. And so how do we go about motivating our community and our families and our students to really buy in what we need everyone to do so that once we move forward, we can stay that way and have a successful school year. Uh, next is um, contact tracing. Our nurses are doing the contact tracing right now with K2. As we add more students in, uh, that becomes more, and then there's a concern for 712 because in that environment, students are intermingling more and there's more students. So what is our plan associated with 712 contact tracing and who's doing that? And then what do we do if um, you know we get overloaded with that? Uh, next is uh, that we are an educational institution and this whole situation is a learning opportunity. So how are we? educating and using this as we move forward, um, educating our community about each step and about a vaccine that's coming. And so how can we use this public health um, situation that we're in and, and educate our community about that? And then last is um, just doing this all with care 
and creativity and having openness to learning that we're all on the same team and we're all in this together. And so how do we look at the school schedule and do we look at things traditionally or do we look at them a little bit differently? Should we pause school right now and then go into the summer in terms of looking at the school year? Um, you know, looking at our facilities and what we need to do to keep students and staff safe and there's money available for that and do we need to invest a little bit more? Um, and then do we also look at, we've set this up to transition, we've got K2, then we go 3, 5, 6, 7, 12, and do we need to look at that differently and look at some of the screenings or the metrics and are there certain grades that are suffering more that would make them jump ahead of another grade? So a fifth grade before fourth or eighth grade before sixth. So not necessarily moving it around, but really looking at the measurement by which we make decisions who comes back in school that's not just predicated by an age of a child. So um, really, really great discussion. Thank you everybody in our group for sharing and coming with your ideas. Great, thank you. Great summary, Krista. Anybody from that group have anything they want to uh, add on to in the next uh, 45 seconds? Well, Christo, take that as a comprehensive summary. That's, thank you very much. Um, Tim, uh, you agreed to report out uh, the other group, uh, all yours. Yes, thank you. And, and we, had, we had a fair amount of crossover uh, with Krista's group. We too had themes um, pretty consistently. Um, we heard from our participants that they didn't see kids as the spreaders. Um, but that oftentimes they're caught in the crossfire, for lack of a better term. But very consistently, um, kids aren't really the issue here um, in terms of spreading. Um, all the same reminders that we've been hearing and that kids, frankly, seem to be um, really gotten into the mode of the hand washing, the mask wearing. A number of people mentioned the importance, however, of proper mask wearing, the importance of the proper mask and the importance of wearing it properly. And again, a uh, pretty consistent theme that um, kids are great at routine, routines. And so hearing the importance of those hand washing, mask wearing, social distancing, um, they catch on quickly from, from what we heard. Um, and uh, hearing it in a consistent manner is going to be important. Balancing the data points, balancing the points of physical health with mental health. Um, a couple of our mental health um, experts just mentioned that there's a very different perspective and um, we seem to be, uh, not just we, not just the district, not just our community, but um, uh, everybody seems to be very focused on the physical health um, and that mental health is, um, is not getting the same level of um, importance. Um, and not the same level of uh, uh, conversation. Without question, equity um, also came up. Uh, the fact that um, we know that um, students of color, uh, um, people of color in general, are more susceptible to COVID um, uh, and as well as a number of other things. And we wanna make sure that we're balancing and making sure we're reaching out um, from an equity lens, but also because um, folks of color, folks, uh, people who are experiencing poverty or um, uh, having difficulties in other means um, are just simply going to be at risk to begin with on top of being more highly at risk of COVID. Again, physical health, mental health equity, understanding what our situation is as a community, probably more of a Dane County community, in terms of hospital beds and the staffing associated with caring. Just making people aware of how the efforts that are taking place are affecting hospital beds and staffing those hospital beds. Um, lastly, we talked, uh, not quite lastly, we talked about logistics and um, particularly within the schools, making sure that um, uh, that we all are very well aware that anything that creates lines in schools is going to create um, a spreading opportunity. And so whether it be temperatures or, um, um, you know, checking for masking or washing hands or entering rooms, uh, we just want to be very cognizant 
that lines create spread. Um, let's see. Um, lastly, kids at risk also became, um, uh, was more and more of a conversation. It became clear that less eyes on kids can mean more challenges in lots of different areas. Um, we heard that although reporting of abuse and other instances has slowed um, an increase in uh, injuries and things like that associated with um, um, uh, associated with not being at school or being in places um, that, uh, whether it's home or someplace else, is definitely on the rise as well. Is there anything from my group, Raven? It looked like you uh, wanted, you had a question or are you good there? All right, very good. Anybody else from my group? Did I miss anything? Candice, um, did I capture your, uh, your notes? Um, as far as you can tell. You did a great job, Tim. Great, thank you. Thank you for the notes. Just for the main last thing of the importance of just getting the community and the families to buy in oh, and make yeah. sure everybody's on board. <gasps> yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for the reminder. Um, uh, and that goes along with um, the fact that kids have, uh, aren't creating the spread, but it's the um, what's happening community-wide that is causing, um, that may be causing more of the spread than we're willing to um, admit to. That um, it isn't just the kids and it's not just the adults, it's the kids with the adults and making sure that we're all taking individual and group respons family responsibility um, for what we're sharing in the community, both from an information perspective, but also from a safety, a health perspective. Thank you, Dr. Bisgrove, for the reminder. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Tim and Krista, for taking on that responsibility of doing that. Uh, to uh, Lauren and Candens for recording that. The notes from those two will be put together in a document, so you'll be able to see the details on that as well. Uh, and Leslie, uh, we have a couple minutes left to talk about uh, next steps. We do. So in preparation for our next meeting, which is December 21st, um, if you could, if you have additional thoughts after um, listening to everyone speak, and sometimes thoughts can pop in at strange times, so they're not, it's certainly not limited to just this meeting. Um, please send questions and or data requests to me by uh, Friday, December 11th, and that way I can make sure that you have all of the information you need for the December 21st meeting. But in addition, um, when we or when I present to the school board on 1214, I can make sure that I um, have all of the um, information or all of the thinking points that you want to make sure that we include um, in that particular presentation. So um, I don't know if Tim or Krista or Drew, if any of you would like to uh, share as we wrap up. Um, I don't, other than just to thank um, all the people that helped to keep those conversations moving and focused. Uh, the notes will be put together, as we said. Uh, we'll be able to explore some of those more. Uh, Leslie's um, request, any additional questions or points you want to make, uh, please send those to them. Again, that will help put together a document of questions and responses so that uh, we can keep up to speed and current with each other on that. Tim, I don't know if you or Krista would like to say anything to bring the meeting to an end. I would just like to compliment everybody on the meeting. I think this was really informative, and I think it's it's really great to see all of us coming from different places and, and different expertise and, you know, like I said, exhibiting this care and creativity and opening, opening, being open to learning from each other because we all are in this together and we can accomplish a lot of great things moving this forward. So I'm really optimistic and I'm really positive about what we've accomplished tonight. And the only thing I would want to say and that I want to say is um, similar to what I said at the, at the end of our last meeting, um, we have lots of people on this call. There are 38 people on this call right this moment. Um, and we are all ambassadors in this community. It's super important for us to be that ambassador, to let people know that we are working on it collaboratively and that, again, we want our kids back in school and once they're in school, we want them to be able to stay in school. And so please be the ambassador we need you all to be. 
that's it for me. Great, yeah, thank you. So on this holiday season, our gift to you is uh, two minutes of <laughs> that. Um, and we'll uh, look forward to our, our next conversation in uh, two weeks. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Appreciate it. And we're committed to, to starting and ending on time. And look at us. We did it. We did so, it. So that's a real plus for all of you busy people. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat>